नमस्कार आई एम डॉक्टर अंशु जिंदल फ्रॉम जिंदल हॉस्पिटल मेरठ आई एम एन ऑब्स्टिट्रिशन कैनिकोलॉजिस्ट एंड एन आई वी एफ एक्सपर्ट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक टूडे रोल ऑफ अल्ट्रासाउंड इन द फर्स्ट ट्राइमिस्टर वी ऑल नो दैट अल्ट्रासाउंड इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ आर एंटीनेटल केयर स्पेशली इन द फर्स्ट ट्राइमिस्टर इट हेल्प्स अस इन नोइंग whether the pregnancy is intrauterine or extrauterine the viability of the pregnancy the dating of the pregnancy and whether it is multiple pregnancies in cases of twins the chorionicity of the pregnancy is also decided very much in the first trimester so a first trimester scan is a very important uh, plays a very important role The nuchal translucency scan or the NT scan which is done between 11 weeks and 13 weeks to 6 days of the first trimester is a very important part of fetal aneuploidy screening along with the double marker test which includes the free beta hcg as well as the pape it has an accuracy of 93% for detection of down syndrome along with this the color doppler parameters like the tricuspid regurgitation and the ductus venosus flow are also used for detecting fetal aneuploidies as well as uh, congenital heart disease in addition to this the uterine artery color doppler and its waveforms which includes the uterine artery notching is very useful in early detection of preeclampsia as well as fetal growth restriction of early onset so that low dose aspirin can be started at the right time very much in the first trimester a detailed first trimester scan which is done transvaginally with high resolution ultrasound and 3D 4D dopplers can also help in detecting various congenital anomalies in the fetus right in the first trimester the first trimester scan can detect anomalies concerning the head neck spine the chest even the four chambered view of the heart lungs stomach the abdominal wall as well as the four extremities placental as well as cord insertion problems it is the bladder the kidneys and the hand and the feet are again evaluated in detail in the second trimester for a more detailed view and today we have dr kuldeep singh to let us know more about the first trimester scanning dr kuldeep singh is a master trainer in the field of ultrasound especially obstetrics and infertility he is delhi based he has authored 16 books on ultrasound both in obstetrics as well as infertility he was awarded the imaging science award at the aicog held at new delhi and he successfully runs the sono school which is a popular training program for ultrasound He is very popular among the gynecologists. So let's hear from Dr. Kuldeep Singh what he does to do a first trimester scan. Hi, this is Dr. Kuldeep Singh. I'm a sonologist and I'm in Delhi. I hope everyone is safe, everyone is healthy. And today we're going to be talking about five secrets in the first trimester. You need to realize there are plenty of things, and you need to be very methodical in that. First and foremost, the secret is you need to be knowing which probe to use when. You have a transabdominal probe, you have a transvaginal probe, and both go hand in hand. There would be conditions where you would be requiring a transabdominal, where you would be requiring a transvaginal. Ideal is choose both so that you don't miss out. Uh, Gestational sac which is quite high up, or a gestational sac which is very small in size, you'll be able to see it on a transabdominal or a transvaginal respect. The third thing is there are the second thing is that there are a few sonographic criteria. You need to be following that. So if you know that this round rump length is till seven millimeters, even if you don't see a cardiac activity, do not label that as an early pregnancy loss. We're looking at a gestational sac or a transvaginal scan, up to eight millimeters or up to fifteen millimeters on a transabdominal scan. You do not see a yolk sac. Do not panic. 
up to 15 millimeters on a transfer channel or up to 25 millimeters on a transfer channel and you do not see an embryo, don't panic. Call the patient back again. The third secret is measurement methodology. How are you going to be measuring the ground gump length from one end to the other proper? It has to be a straight line, not along the curve. Try and measure it between seven and eight weeks. That's the ideal time for dating, unless not to there's a specific indication for that. The gestational sac has to be measured inner to inner and a yolk sac also inner to inner and your machine is going to do the calculations. Do not measure the yolk sac along with the embryo and give a false ground the ground length. The fourth thing that comes up are the myths. You need to be very careful and aware of these myths. I've seen a gestational sac inside the uterus. I don't need to see an index. Uh, that is the commonest problem we have. There could be heterotopic things. Somebody has done an IVF, an embryo transfer. There cannot be an ectopic. Why can't there be an ectopic? There can be. So do a complete assessment, evaluate the index carefully. The fifth secret, which is very, very important, is terminology. Not that you do not see a gestational sac in the uterine fundus, in the cavity means it's an ectopic. No, it could be lying eccentric in the cavity and that could be an angular pregnancy. It could be lying in one of the horns in a septate uterus or a bicornuate uterus, lying in the cavity and you're going to be calling it a coronal pregnancy. You could be looking at uh, something in the adnexa, uh, that's a tubal pregnancy. You're looking at something in the cervical canal without any symptoms and you're looking at vascularity around it, that's going to be a cervical ectopic. With an anterior uterine portion thinning and you're looking at a previous scar with a weak sign, that's when you're going to be looking at or suspecting a cesarean scar ectopic. Five secrets, the probe that you're going to be using, the uh, terminology, the measurement methodology, the sonographic criteria and the myths. Be careful of these five things, follow them judiciously and you're going to, going to do a good job in the first trimester. Thank you Dr. Kuldeep Singh for giving the radiologist's perspective of the first trimester screening. Really, it was very enlightening. And I would just like to add by saying that the first trimester screening includes not only the fetus, but also the placenta, the placental equitexture, whether there's any subchorionic collection, any masses, cyst in the placenta should also be commented upon. The relation of the placenta to the cervix can be commented upon in the first trimester but it might not be so accurate because the placenta might ascend in the second trimester. In addition, gynecological pathology like extrauterine pregnancy, adenexal masses, biconvate uterus, uterine septum, fibroid in the uterus should also be commented in the first trimester screening scan as well as the cervical length. So if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to our channel Global ART Forum so that we can get you more such updates in the future. Thank you so much.